Hello, everyone. Welcome to the cybersecurity webinar series by Manage Engine. If you are new here, this is to let you know that we are already in part five of the cybersecurity webinar series. Earlier, we have covered topics like ransomware, browser based attacks, mobile threats, and phishing attacks. And today, we'll be discussing SQL injections and cross site scripting. So today's agenda looks really simple. I'll be starting off with SQL injection, and then I'll be giving you a brief summary about it, what exactly SQL injection is, uh, with different examples, the different types of SQL injection, and then I'll move over to cross-site scripting, which is also known as XSS. Well, uh, I'll be going through the same menu there as well, I'll be giving you an overview with example, different types, as well as at the end, I'll wrap up this webinar with the remediation and prevention techniques. Now, starting off with SQL injection. Before I explain what SQL injection is, let me start off by showing you a few news headlines. Now, as you can see, Lenovo was hacked recently. Uh, Southern uh, Heartland payment systems, which was hacked around 2010, it cost the organization about $300 million. Georgia Tech was attacked this year about in April. 1.3 million people's personal information was released. Similarly, Gan Crab ransomware affected some really big organizations, namely TeamViewer and ConnectWise. Then medical organizations were breached, government organizations were breached, and one thing was common among all of these attacks. No points for guessing. It's SQL injection. Now, before I tell you about more about SQL injection, I'd like to explain the gravity of this situation. Now, there is this nonprofit organization known as OWASP which stands for Open Web Application Security Project. You can always visit their website whenever you want, which is www.oasp.org. Now, each year, what they do is they focus on website-related threats, that is, web-related threats, and every three years, they release a top 10 report of web-related threats. And SQL injection has been number one threat in this report. Now, it is just astounding a technique like SQL injection, which was found in the year 1998, is still one of the biggest threats out there in the internet. Now, just to let you know how easy it is, there are YouTube videos where people are teaching their three-year-olds how to do an SQL attack. In fact, you don't even need any you know, programming knowledge or any background in coding to go ahead and do an SQL attack. There are already applications, softwares, completely free, available online, which you can go ahead and start using. And these attacks are so rampant, it's not sparing anybody, whether you're from the World Trade Organization, whether you're from the Wall Street, whether you're from any federal bureau, any federal organizations, everyone has been hit one way or the other. If you want to know more about such kind of SQL injection attacks, you can always go ahead and Google SQLI Hall of Shame. It's from a website called Code Kermajon, which will tell you uh, all the list of recent SQLI attacks and all the past ones as well. And that list is extremely huge. So if you wanna know more about it, feel free to Google around. Now, to understand SQL injection, we'll first have to understand what exactly SQL is. Now, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. In layman terms, it is a computer programming language which helps us manage data in databases. Now you have your data, and you have your databases, it could be Oracle, it could be any database which your organization use. 
Now SQL, what it does here is it helps you store as well as retrieve and manipulate data inside the database according to the requirements. Moving on, it's a small example of what a normal SQL query looks like. Now imagine you're running an online store and you are selling, say, shoes in your e-store. So the database query for your online store will look something similar to this, where you can get the item name and the item description from the database, depending on the item ID, which is the item number. Now from this, the web application, which is your website front from where the users will go ahead and access all these products, that web application builds a string query that is sent to the database as a single SQL statement. Now that string query is what actually pulls the data from the database and then shows it to the user. For a more clearer example, imagine this is what your website looks like. Now the user wants to look at this cool black shoe, which is the first shoe at the top. Now what the user will do is the user will click there and it will generate an input which will look something like the URL there. That is HTTP colon www.estore xyz and at the end item ID triple nine. So that shoe is stored in the database as an item whose number is triple nine. Now this in turn generates the following SQL query which tells the database that, hey, you give me the item name and the item description that is of that black shoe, whose number is triple nine. And then the item description would be shown to the user. Now what happens in SQL injection is you have a malicious SQL query. And then you, of course you have a backend database where all the data is there. Now this malicious SQL query is forcefully injected into your backend database. And as a result, profit. Again, just to uh, clear it out with the previous example. Now, uh, the previous example where I mentioned how the data is pulled and the information is pulled from the database, what I will do is I will turn that normal query into a malicious SQL query. So to do that, all I'll do is I'll add these extra characters at the end of the SQL query, which is in red, that is R one equals one. Now, as a result, the corresponding SQL query will look something like this. Select item name and item description from the items where item number is triple nine or one equals one. And since the statement one equals one is always true, what the query does in return is it will return all the product names and descriptions which are present in the database, even those that you or the user may not be eligible to access. So with such a small modification to the SQL query, a person can get every information related to the products in your database. Let me give you another example. Now, one more thing what attackers can do is they can also take advantage of incorrectly filtered characters to alter the SQL commands, such as including a semicolon to separate two different fields. Now here what I'm doing, how I'm altering this SQL query is I'm adding semicolon and then drop table users. Now this input, what it will do is it will generate the following SQL query where it will tell the database, okay, give me item number, give me the item name and the item description of the item number triple nine, but along with it, drop the table users. And as a result, your entire user database could be deleted. That's it, because your database will only understand what it's told. If I tell the database to drop all the table users, poof, it's gone. Such a simple query and it can have devastating effects. Again, uh, another example. This is a really special one and really commonly used. Now, another way SQL queries can be manipulated is by using a union select statement. Now, what exactly is, the, is this union select statement? It, what it does is it combines two unrelated, unrelated select queries 
to retrieve data from different database inputs. Now, I have altered this query, SQL injection, as you, if you want to say it, into union select username password from users, which will produce the following database query, where give me the item name, give me the item description, and also the username and passwords. And what it'll do is, it will not only give you that cool black shoes description, but it will also give you or the user the names and passwords for every user in the database. And just to think about it, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Just such a simple command and the attacker can get the private information of all the account holders in your website. Now, what all kinds of SQL injections are there? There are three main types, namely in-band SQL injection, inferential SQL injection, and out-of-band SQL injection. Now, what is in-band SQL injection? So here, the attacker uses the same channel of communication to launch their attacks, and it's a really famous one. I mean, it's the most common type of SQL injection attack in history. Now, what makes this kind of attack so special is its simplicity. It's so simple and efficient that anybody can go ahead and do it. For example, uh, there are two subvariants, error-based SQL injection and union-based SQL injection. In error-based, what happens is you inject a malicious SQL query and you try to produce an error message from the database. Now the attacker can potentially use the data provided by these error messages to gather information about the structure of the database. And in the second one, that is union-based SQL injection, which I just showed you uh, in the previous example, you, you use union SQL operators, which in turn can provide really sensitive data such as usernames and passwords and the attacker can use this stolen data however way he or she may choose moving on there is inferential sql injections now what happens here is the attacker sends data payloads to the server and observes the response of the server now this is also called a blind SQL injection because unlike in the whatever the attacker thus the attacker cannot directly see what is present in your database instead what the attacker does is he uses one of the two methods boolean or time based in Boolean, the attacker will provide a malicious SQL script and he will expect a result. A result which says whether that script is true or false. If the script works out, that is, if the output or the result is true, then something will be modified in your database, which the attacker will already be able to recognize. And if the result is false, everything will stay, will remain unchanged. So the attacker, what he or she will do is he will keep trying different types of malicious SQL injection techniques or scripts until he gets a true response from the database. And then he or she will keep doing the same technique over and over again until he completely modifies or destroys your database. In time-based, is the same technique, but what the attacker will look here is the time it takes for the database to return a result. Now, depending on the number of seconds which a database data if it's so for a certain time, if the database is taking to process it, that means it's working. And then the data and then the attacker will use it again and again and will modify or completely damage your database 
And last but not the least, we have out of band SQL injections. Now, out of band SQL is performed when there is no direct channel to launch the attack, or your database is too slow or unstable for a inferential or blind SQL injection. Now, it mostly these kind of SQL injections mostly depends on the capacity of the server to create DNS or HTTP requests to transfer data to an attacker. Moving on, um, I'll be explaining about cross-site scripting. Now, of course, at the end of this webinar, I will tell you how to avoid both SQL injections as well as cross-site scripting, which is also called as XSS, and uh, the best ways to prevent them. Now, cross-site scripting. Uh, it's another common attack in the OWASP report of top 10 web threats. Cross-site scripting was in number three in the 2013 report. In 2017, it fell down to number seven, but still due to its similarity with SQL injections, we have selected it. It's still a really potent attack and a really dangerous one. So what the attacker does here is they inject a malicious code into a vulnerable web application, but how it's different from say an SQL injection is it targets the users directly. So its main objectives is to compromise the user accounts, steal their information, steal uh, the user's cookies, and also uh, maybe activate some hidden Trojan horse programs which are there in the user's computer. Now, uh, this is just an example of how a cross-site scripting attack happens. The perpetrator will first try and search for a website which is vulnerable, then they will inject the website with a malicious SQL script. Let's assume that script steals the cookies of the users. Then the website visitor, each website visitor in that website will be giving all their cookies to the perpetrator. Now there are three different kinds of cross-site scripting or XSS. The first is stored cross-site scripting, which is also known as persistent. The second one is reflected cross-site scripting, also known as non-persistent. And the third one is DOM-based cross-site scripting. Okay, we'll start off with stored cross-site scripting. Now imagine you are an attacker or any random attacker. So while browsing an e-commerce website, an attacker discovers a vulnerability that allows HTML tags to be embedded in the site's comment section. Now imagine the comment which is right here, great price for a great item, read my review here, script RC here, I have embedded uh, a JavaScript right here. Now these embedded tags becomes a permanent feature of the page, which causes the browser to pause them with the rest of the source code every time the page is open. Now from each point, each time the page is accessed, the HTML tag in the comment will be activating the JavaScript. The JavaScript could be anything, Let's assume I have written the JavaScript to steal the um, cookies of the users. So each time somebody accesses this website, this JavaScript will be activated, which is obviously hosted on another site. And then I'll be steal all the cookies. Kind of XSS or cross-site scripting attack is that a stored attack only requires that the victim visit the compromised web page. That means the victim doesn't have to do anything else. He, he or she doesn't have to click on any uh, you know, bad links or download any infected files. All he or she has to do is visit that infected website or compromised website and their cookies would be stolen. And this really increases the reach of the attack, which endangers all visitors, no matter how vigilant they are. So, um, 
in using uh, so using this cookies you know the attacker can compromise the visitor's account uh, granting him easy access to personal information and credit card data and whatever is saved in your cookies meanwhile the visitor who may like have visited that compromised website might never even know that you know he has been hacked and his cookies has been stolen so we have a question and answer sec segment at the end of this webinar where we'll be taking questions so if you have any other questions please leave them in the comment and we will answer them at the end now uh, just to give you an example of persistent xss myspace probably the first social website out there social networking website now um in 2005, there was a 19-year-old hacker known as Sammy Kamper, who all he wanted to do was update his website, uh, as in update his profile on MySpace. But MySpace had limitations. You know, you can only upload, say, 10 pictures, or you can only, say, do X amount of things. Now, uh, Sammy Kamper wanted to upload more pictures. You know, so he started messing with the website's front end and databases, and he found out that he can actually do that. So he kept going on and on, and finally he ended up making a worm, a Trojan worm, or rather uh, XSS worm, if you may say it, which literally was spread to over a million accounts in less than 20 hours. It it is called sammy attack s-a-m-y attack sammy attack you can go ahead and google it myspace had to close down their website and had to delete his profile to stop this worm from infecting more pages that's how persistent um, this xss attack is, and that's why it's called a persistent attack the second one is called reflected or non-persistent cross-site scripting. Here, uh, what the attacker does is the attacker uh, has a payload and it has to uh, become a part of the request that is sent to the web server. Now, uh, the attacker, once achieves that goal, it is then reflected back in such a way that the HTTP response includes the payload from the HTTP requests. Now, all the attacker has to do is he has to send phishing emails or he has to put the malicious links or other social engineering techniques, techniques to lure the victim into making a request to the server, often done through social network. Now, once that victim is lured, it is reflected. That is the, that's why it's called reflected Excesses, it is reflected in the executed uh, is executed and that's how the data can be stolen of that specific user finally um, the last kind of cross-site scripting attack it's called dom or dom based cross-site scripting it's a really advanced technique of cross-site scripting actually um, now here it uh, there are some prerequisites where web applications, client-side scripts um, should write data provided by the user to the document object model, or also known as DOM. The data is subsequently read from the DOM by the web application and outputted to the browser. That is, if the data is incorrectly handled. And an attacker can then inject a payload, which will be stored as part of the DOM and will be executed each time the user tries to access it. Now, it is more of a client-side attack. That means, uh, you know, the attacker never really goes behind the server side, or you can say to the uh, database side. And that's why it's a little more harder to detect as well, because since it's more client-based, you may never even know that your firewall may never even catch it. Now, uh, we have covered SQL injections and cross-site scripting, and now I'll be telling you the best ways to prevent and mitigate such events happening to you or your organization. First step is sanitization. What is sanitization? 
Now, sanitization is the practice of writing code that can identify illegitimate user inputs. Now, a website or a web application becomes vulnerable when it has to be developed in a hurry because a lot of coders or developers out there are under pressure to launch a web application and they forget simple basics. And that's why the web application becomes vulnerable. So it's one of the best practices, sanitization, but it's not exactly full, uh, foolproof, you may say, because see, it's literally not feasible to map out all the legal and illegal inputs, which in turn can cause a large number of false positives, which again can interfere with the user experience. That is each user who is visiting your web application might not find it um, that interactive or not, or might have some issues or it can directly affect your web applications functionality so there is another way which is called html filter now html filter what it does is it filters out all the you know malicious sql queries there are a few ones which are out there and it will filter out all those but there's even a better way which is known as web application firewall or waf now these are the most commonly employed filters out there which helps you filter special injection techniques such as sql injection cross-site scripting and all the other threats out there now how does it do it waf or web application firewall relies on a large list of meticulously crafted signatures this list is also regularly updated which in turn allows it to pick out malicious sql queries now usually such a list holds signatures to address specific attack vectors and is regularly patched to introduce blocking rules for newly discovered vulnerabilities and modern web applications are also you know often integrated with such a web application firewall making it more stronger making it more resilient and from these, a web application firewall can receive additional information and further augment its security capabilities. And last but not the least, we have penetration testing. It is uh, pretty self-explanatory. There are several organizations out there which can help you pen uh, some penetration testings on your web applications, whether they are vulnerable or not, and will help you fix it as well. So with this, we come to an end of this specific webinar of SQL injections and cross-site scripting. The web is filled with malware. Be safe, be precise. Uh, there's a lot of data out there on these kind of threats on the internet. If you'd like to know more, go ahead, search for them. Uh, if you want to know more about solutions through which you can detect uh, such affair, such um, attacks we have a lot of products in manage engine as well so you can always go ahead and ask us coming on next thursday we'll be talking about the ddos attacks which is again really one of the major source or kinds of attacks out there on the internet again if you have any questions feel free to comment them or feel free to post them and we will take them right away thank you and have a great day ahead